Hey folks, so I'm on 9-7, um, step 5, uh, yeah, step 5. Uh, now, at five, step 5, you're doing everything on both wings at the same time, or both elevators at the same time, and at step 6, it even tells you to repeat everything you did in the previous step, etc. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do one elevator completely, then I'm going to go back and finish that elevator. As you can see, it's still all just clecoed together and held in a corner. The problem is for me, space is kind of a, an issue. Uh, I need a bigger work area. Probably what I'm going to do uh, when I get the wings is pull my desk out from the wall so I can walk all the way around it and put all this stuff like up on the wall or something, you know, build another area to put it. Uh, space is definitely a thing. But for now, I've got to start dimpling the skins uh, and basically getting everything ready to fully assemble this sucker. And then I'll work on that one. So, good times. Having fun. It's a little cold out. It's been 80 degrees here, and now it's 40. And I don't know what that's about. So, oh well, here we go. And here we go indeed. So, this is going to be a fairly long video. Um, this particular set of steps and the work that I did uh, was over the course of a weekend so that means it was you know 10 plus hours. This is step 9 which is dimpling all the skins and something you're gonna see me do uh, through the course of the skin dimpling is stop and go back and look at the instructions quite a bit because I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be dimpling all of the holes especially some of the outside holes where the fairings attach. And to be completely honest, I'm still unclear. I mean, I went ahead and dimpled it because the instructions say, dimple the holes in the skins. It even says, don't forget the, the closeout tabs, which are the little tabs you bent down. It says, dimple all of them. So I looked and looked and looked. I even went back and looked in the instructions to see how the fairings are detached. As far as I can tell, you're supposed to dimple everything. It just struck me as odd though. So they're dimpled. The music you're hearing in the background is a type of music called Chill Step, by the way. It's one of the uh, styles of music that I listen to uh, quite often when doing these uh, activities. It's mellow, you know, it's easy to listen to it. I can listen to it for hours, and it's nice. As to what the dimples look like, here's a good close-up of what they look like. And also, I did not dimple the rounded tabs on the skins. I'm fairly certain you're not supposed to dimple those, considering the type of attachment, uh, which is a blind rivet for those. Uh, it's a very similar process, I have to assume, as the rudder, and so dimpling those did not seem like the correct thing to do. If anyone disagrees, please let me know. I can always go back and dimple those with the hand dimpler uh, before doing the final assembly. By the way, I'm curious if, you, curious if you guys think this video speed is too fast, too slow, not enough detail, too much detail, etc. Leave feedback, please. Once I get both of the skins completely dimpled for that particular elevator, which was the left elevator, by the way, uh, I went through and started deburring all the little bits uh, in preparation to take those out in the yard and spray paint them, uh, get them you know, nicely primed. If I haven't mentioned it before, I highly recommend that dimpler device. It has definitely paid for itself at this point. I couldn't imagine doing this with the old-fashioned way, or doing it all by hand even. It'd just be brutal. At one point though, I did make a mistake here. Um, one of the things you're supposed to do is machine countersink. That's what I'm doing here. This this is the rear spar. You're supposed to machine countersink the top uh, 29 holes. And because I the document that you're looking at is actually of the right spar, and I'm working on the left spar, so I dimpled the wrong 29. Uh, it's okay. I figured it out, and eventually I just uh, took apart the other elevator and used that one and salvaged this one for that one so just swapped them no big deal it's identical parts except for those holes that i created oops that goes back to that whole you know measure twice before you cut and in this case just make sure you're working on the right parts i would say definitely um label your parts left and right and be thorough uh, 
as always, be thorough. The instructions did say that dimpling can cause the flanges on the front and rear spars to bend. I didn't have that. I didn't have that problem. So, I don't know. Dimpling the uh, rib halves was trivial, and now I'm. You can see I'm dimpling the inboard and outboard tips. Again, trivial. No big deal at all. And then this is me going through and machine countersinking that trailing edge bit, uh, which, for whatever reason, when I dimple those or dimple when I machine countersink those, uh, the countersink chatters a little bit. It's not a super clean uh, looking, you know, uh, machine countersink, but eh, it works. So here I'm measuring and then scuffing the inside of the skins. Oh, and bending the tip up a little bit. Scuffing the inside of the skins with some sandpaper uh, because it uses some foam ribs uh, that you will use on the end there. I don't know why they use foam, but they do. And so you'd kind of have to scuff it a little bit for the, the, the tank sealer to glue those foam ribs to. And so that's what I'm doing there. And then back to clean the debris off of the thing. Every time you see me pull my iPad out, I'm actually uh, tracking hours. That's usually what I'm doing. And so here's where I was talking about earlier. I, I realized that I had accidentally cut the wrong uh, side of that uh, rear spar, the little rear spar. So I'm now having to go through and pull apart the other elevator in order to get access to it so I can go ahead and use it instead. And uh, this is okay. This is, you know, it, prep, in preparation for when I'll start working on this one too. Interesting seeing me go super fast on this. I gotta be honest, after all those clicos, my hand was sore. Now you can see that the part is actually primed and I'm beginning the riveting process of this particular elevator. Um, and so this is uh, the rib tips, <clears throat> the in inboard and outboard rib tips and uh, getting those things riveted together with the various rivet types and pretty easy, nothing, you know, no big deals. Beautiful day, you can see how sunny it is in the background. Uh, sometimes I wish that this was like open to the sky because it's just gorgeous out. That will change, you know, over time it's going to get a lot hotter and uh, I'm going to kind of regret being out here. I have to figure out a way to, you know, big old fan or something. So here I'm working on the counterbalance skin, getting it riveted into place, again using the squeezer. And I think I had to drill one of them out, I don't remember if I did or not, but for whatever reason one of them. I I believe it was on this one, it might have been the other one. Uh, it just didn't squeeze correctly, so I, I think I mashed it. Like a, when I went to squeeze, the squeezer slipped off to the side, so it, it only squeezed half the shop head or something like that, I forget. But, you know, pff, trivial. At this point, old hat. I thought the rivets looked pretty good. Here's a picture of it. Um, that was a really quick picture, sorry. And then it's about putting the uh, hinge reinforcement plates on. Now, here I'm going through and I'm like searching for the K1006 uh, little snap bushing thingy or whatever it is. Um, and I couldn't find it. And I was like, oh man, bag, you know, 1130. What did I do with it? Well, I'd already used it previously and I'd already put it in one of those little blue buckets over there by the wall. I eventually find it and go, okay. And so this is me just organizing more of the stuff out of bags into those little blue containers that, you know, I got at Walmart for, you know, a dollar for 10 or whatever it was. And then it's just about putting the 10 or however many rivets it is per uh, reinforcement plate on there so that those are done. And here I'm working on the root rib. And I'll actually have a nice, nice close-up picture of the root rib. A uh, little awkward because it kind of bends back, as you can see, but, you know, nice and pretty. And there's some more rivets, shop head rivets of the, the back side of the reinforcement plate there. And eventually I'm working on the uh, elevator horn, which is that white thing, and getting it in place. Again, this is where you really want to make sure you have your left and right uh, piles separated. Because it would be really easy at this stage to rivet the wrong root horn on. 
and that would be a disaster. And now I'm working on the nut plates, on riveting the nut plates onto the reinforcement plates. Um, trivial, real easy. And eventually I'll give you a picture of what that looks like. And I've got this piece primed a slightly different color because I ran out of paint. There it is, look at that. And here I begin the process of uh, back riveting. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of rivets in for the, around that reinforcement plate, and this is what that tape looks like. Uh, that stuff's great. Back riveting is the way to go. And you can see there in the foreground, I'm back riveting all those plates on, so awesome. And here we are the next day, and I'm gonna begin working on, again, setting up uh, lots of back riveting because this is where I'm putting the ribs, the, the different rib halves onto the skin. And so the first thing you have to do is put rivets in and then put tape down to keep the rivets from falling out. And then you do them one at a time. Not hard. One of these, yeah, right there, I bent it slightly, so I had to bend it back. With this particular area, the only thing I would say be watchful or mindful of is the fact that you will be working in mirror uh, between the left and the right elevators. And so, uh, you know, like for example, here I'm beginning to work on the top, whereas previously I was working on the bottom. Well, on this particular rudder, when you're working on the or elevator, when you're working on the bottom, the ribs face one way, and when you're working on the top, they face the other, and it's opposite on the other side. So. Uh, I'm just kind of rambling, but you get my point. You'll see what I'm talking about when you look at the instructions and go, oh, okay, I see why they're doing it that way. That makes perfect sense. Oh, yeah, there I had to drill one out because it just, that was uh, another one where I, I it, it just, it, I mashed it and it kind of bent it instead of actually putting it in nicely. You can't really tell when you're looking at this thing going at this speed, but I actually used the little aluminum tool for testing my rivets to see if they're the right, if the shop heads are the right size or if they're too tall. I do it a lot, but you don't see it because it just kind of happens really quickly. Am I depressing? I really do, honest. The other thing is depressing is how fat I am. Jiminy Christmas. You don't really realize it until you see yourself on video. They say it adds 10 pounds, Pfft, more like 30. So here I'm going to be riveting the rear spar to the skin, and you have to do it differently based on whether you're using doing the left or right elevator. Um, and it actually wants you to create a custom bucking bar for one of the steps, and I have opted to not do that. Uh, it actually says if you don't want to create a custom bucking bar to go ahead and uh, get some special blind rivets from Vans. I've already got those on order, and they're on their way. Uh, for the rest of this, and I'm depressed that this doesn't really show up all that well, I decide to back rivet this piece, even though you don't have to do it this way. I found it easier to uh, basically use a bucking bar to back rivet, which I thought was clever, and it worked really, really well. Then I flipped over the skin and noticed it kind of scratched the skin a little bit uh, on top of the back riveter, which, eh, damn it. Well, what do you do? I mean, once I paint or vinyl this thing, it's you won't notice it anymore. I'm thinking of going with vinyl, by the way. There's some really nice plain vinyls out there. And uh, I think that would be less expensive and better in all ways. Helping my wife with the weed whacker there. And here I'm making sure that everything lines up correctly as I stack the two pieces on top of each other with regards to the ribs inside. But that's it. And of course, dropping the clecos on the floor. That's it for this time, though. Um, until I get the rest of those pop rivets, though, I can't really do much more on this elevator. So next time, the other elevator. Fun.